Okay, so um, <clears throat> I told you guys there was two units we could do, and I just decided to choose one or the other. And I decided to choose um, going over uh, logarithmic functions. And the reason I did this, rhythmic functions, um, is because if you do like a, a college like math entrance exam, um, like a math placement exam when you get into college, um, or for people who haven't taken like the SAT, ACT yet, that sort of thing, uh, or if you end up taking it again, I figured you're more likely to see this than you are to see uh, vectors, which was the other option. So, yeah. So I figured we could, could spend some time on this, hopefully gain some additional understanding, um, as opposed to something you're less likely to see. So logarithmic functions today is gonna be a little bit of an introduction. Introduction. All right, so if we write uh, y equals log base b of x, you would read this out loud as log base b of x. So don't, don't read it as log b x, you're going to say log base b of x. That's how you say it. Log base b of x. Uh, this right here is the base. That's why we say base b. Uh, this right here is the argument. Uh, to be honest, before I looked at another teacher's notes, uh, as a teacher myself, I had no idea that's what it was called. So if you forget that, you're probably never going to be tested on it, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple things that you need to know about the base. The base um, has to be greater than zero. And cannot equal one has to be greater than zero, cannot equal one. It can be fractions, can be decimals. Uh, positive whole numbers are fine, cannot be one exactly. I'm not gonna tell you why now because it, your eyes will glaze over and you won't really pay attention, but later when we do some problems, it'll be like, oh yeah, that's really obvious why it can't be a negative number or why it can't be one. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to look at um, logarithmic functions compared to exponential functions, or really the logarithmic form of some uh, expressions versus the exponential form of some expressions because logarithmic functions and exponential functions are inverses of each other. And that's going to be a lesson on a specific day where we'll actually go back and forth finding the inverses. Um, but it's really important to know that they are inverses of each other. So the word inverse should sound familiar because you've studied it before. So we learned like adding and subtracting are inverses, multiplying and dividing are inverses, uh, raising something to the power of two and square rooting something are inverses. And then most recently we learned that like doing sine of something and then sine of sine inverse of something, those are like inverses. So inverses are not new to us, um, but there are specific inverses that are new to us. Like trig, that was new and maybe a little bit uncomfortable, but then we realized like, yeah, you do, you do an operation and then you undo it. That's all an inverse is. So what we're learning that's just kind of a fact um, is we're going to say a little note to ourselves is that logs and exponentials, and if you, if you need to write this out the whole word instead of shorthanding it, you can because these are your notes. So if, this, if you won't remember this, write out the whole word. Logs and exponentials are inverses. So they undo each other.
and I'm going to say, since these are my notes, I'm going to say like plus, uh, minus, or uh, multiply, divide. Maybe I should put x, x for multiply. You can use whatever symbol you want for multiply. I know x kind of feels like a variable at this point. Whatever symbol you want to use for multiply, yeah. I had a math teacher that would not let us ever, we never were allowed to use x for multiply, we always had to use parentheses. Every single time. We couldn't use a dot, we couldn't use an x, we had to use parentheses. But whatever you want to put there for multiply, multiply, divide. Okay. Um, so we're going to write um, the two different forms down. So we're going to say the if we're converting from a log form to exponential form, we're going to see that to convert from log form to exponential form, we have to do a little bit of that inverse stuff. We have to undo some information to be able to get it from one form to the next. So if I start uh, with one form, I'm going to say the log form could be log base 2 of 8 equals 3. And for us, log form is not the form that our brain thinks in. Log is brand new to us. Uh, our brain thinks in exponential form. So the thing that we're going to undo is the log base 2 of 8 equals 3. We're going to undo the log base 2. And the thing that we're comfortable with is exponential form having bases to an exponent. So whenever you undo the operation, the thing that is kind of the same about these is that a log has a base and an exponent has a base. It's something to an exponent. And the thing that has an exponent, we call that the base. So this has a base of 2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as having a base of 2 and a base of 2. So what I just did is I put something in the problem to do an inverse, kind of like if you had a minus 3 in a problem, so you'd add 3 on both sides of the equal sign. It's the same idea. So what just happened is the base 2 and the base 2 cancel out. And I end up getting for my exponential form that 8 equals base of 2 to the third power, which is a true statement, right? We know that 2 to the third power is 8. So we just converted it into exponential form. OK, if we try log base 12 of 12 equals 1, what base would I have to do on both sides? 12. So I would put a base of 12 and a base of 12. And then my bases would cancel out. Base 12 and log base 12 cancel. And I would get 12 equals a base of 12 to the first power. True statement? Yeah, that's true. OK. Uh, for this one, negative 5 equals log base 1 half to the 32. So what base am I going to use this time? One half. One half. One half. All right, so a base of one half and a log base of one half, those cancel out. And I get one half to the negative fifth equals 32. That one's not really currently in my brain, so I'm going to use my calculator to double check. So 1 half to the negative fifth is 32. That is also true. OK. Yeah, so the reason that it works that way, I'll show you guys why that's true, is that when we have exponents, if we go back to our warm up, if you have an exponent outside of a parenthesis, what does it do? It multiplies by the exponents inside the parenthesis, right? So inside the parenthesis, neither one of these numbers had an exponent, which means they both technically had an exponent of 1. We agree with that? 
Okay, so inside the parentheses, we had a one to the one and a two to the one. Outside the parentheses, we had a negative five. So once we work with that negative five, we have one to the negative five over two to the negative five. And then does anyone remember what you do if you have a negative exponent? You take that number with the negative exponent and it moves to the other side of the fraction and then on the other side of the fraction it becomes a positive exponent. So the one to the negative five would move to the bottom and it would become one to the positive five. The two to the negative five would move to the top and it would become two to the positive five. So this is two to the positive five over one to the positive five. Two to the five is 32, one to the five is one. So it's 32 over one. And that's how it works, yeah. Yeah, flips it, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. All right, let's try some of the problems that are exponential form converted to log form. Okay, so this one has 4 to the 0 equals 1. What log are we going to do? Log base. Four. We're going to do log base 4. So I'm going to write log base 4 on the left side. And I'm going to write log base 4 on the right side. So now the log base 4 cancels with the base of 4. And the 0 is no longer an exponent. It's just a 0. Actually, let me write this over in the keep my notes consistent, equals zero. And then on the other side, I've got log base four of one. Log base four of one. All right, let's try another one. For this one, I'm going to have uh, five equals one-fifth to the negative one. So I'm going to do log base one-fifth. Log base one-fifth. Log base one-fifth. Okay? So my bases are going to cancel, log base one-fifth, base one-fifth. On the left side, I get log base one-fifth of five equals, on the right side, these cancel. The exponent is no longer an exponent. It's just a regular number. So this equals negative one. Okay, last one, we're going to say 81 equals 3 to the 4th. Log base 3. Log base 3. Log base 3. The log with the base of 3 cancels with the base of 3. And we get log base of 3 of 81 equals 4. All right. How do your brains feel? Pretty good? Okay. So that's, that's basically, that's what a log is. That's all a log is. It's another way to phrase um, an exponential expression. That's all it is, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys a worksheet uh, to practice rewriting those, okay? And you'll see that the worksheet has some that are just straight up answers and it has some that are not. Um, can I what? Oh, go down. I have to show you 
a couple more things actually before I show you the worksheet because I, I put some things on the worksheet that I haven't talked to you about yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are two special types of logs that get their own button on your calculator. The first one is called the common logarithm. And this is log base 10. And the reason we have log base 10 is because it's really common to see things um, to an exponent of 10 if you think about how your decimal places work. How far apart is each decimal place? It's a base of 10, right? Tenth, hundredth, thousandth, ten thousandth, hundred thousandth, millionth. Right? They're all bases of 10 apart. They're just negative tens, right? Um, or if we do 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, like those are base 10, those are 10 apart. So log base 10 is really common for that, right? So this is the notation for common log. Now, um, if you think about when we learned with square roots, you don't have to write this down, but I'm going to show you. When we do square roots, we say here's a square root, right? And then we say, here's a cube root, here's a fourth root, here's a fifth root. Why do you think we don't put a two for a square root? It's how you start, but why doesn't it need a two? It's the most common, and we're lazy. Okay, let's do another one like that. Uh, we're going to say x, okay? x to the second, x to the third, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, x to the sixth. Uh, what is the exponent here? One. One. Why don't we write it? Lazy. It's the most common and we're lazy. Okay? Now, if the common log is the most common, do you think we write the base of 10? No. no. We typically write... just log. They don't even put the base of 10 in there. So for the common logarithm, you're not going to see a base of 10. If you put a base of 10, I won't mark you down. It's fine for you to put a base of 10. But if you ever see a 10 printed on a worksheet, printed in a textbook, uh, if you ever see just a log, it is log base 10. That's what it is. And if you look at your calculator, your calculator has a button that says log and it's log base 10, it's the common log, okay? If you ever want to find a log that is not the common log, which is what we are often doing because we're not always in upper level math classes, we're not like, well, let's deal with everything that has a nice decimal, right? We don't always have like powers of 10 when we deal with our class. Uh, we don't always have answers that are like 10, 100, 1,000, right? We have other things like 53 as answers. Um, so since we're not always dealing with that, we have to be able to type in log like base 2 or something. The way that you guys are going to get to the logs that you'll be typing in this class is you're going to hit the math button, hit math, and then hit up, up. Math, up, up. If you have a fancy color calculator, anyone have the new fancy color ones? No, you're all using mine. The, one, the ones that you buy that have the screen that's like colorful, the brand new ones. Okay, no. So math up, up says log base. It allows you to put a base other than 10 in. So you can do like base five of, what was one that we did actually? We can verify that it's true. Uh, we could do this one. We could show log base one half of 32. Log base one half of 32. And we can show that it's still negative five. Here we go. So hit math, up, up. That's how we can type in log base. OK. So we have the common log. Now there's another one. And the other one is called the natural. 
log. The other one is called the natural log. And this one is a log with a base of E. Have you guys seen the number E before? Kind of like pi, but a different decimal. Yes, E is, I'll show you guys where it is on your calculator. It's in two spots. So there's a plain E right here above the division sign. Okay, so you can hit that if you just want a plain E. E is 2.718 or 2.72. So 2.718. Two point seven one eight. It is this name right here, Euler. Euler. Don't say it like Americans. That's Euler. Don't say it like that. Euler. Euler's number. All right. Uh, I think that's why it's an E because. His last name was Euler, and he named it after himself, Euler's number. Uh, log base E, and for whatever reason, they have log base E, they rewrite as LN. LN. Uh, I have a friend in Arizona who is an engineer, and he says lawn. I grew up in Oregon. I've never heard it called anything but LN. And I've and I did my um, master's program here, and we called it LN, but in Arizona they called it lawn. I I don't know. I don't know. I made fun of him a lot uh, when I tutored him for calculus. Um, so I I just want you guys to have all the different ways of saying it. Uh, if you say lawn, I will make fun of you. I'm just telling you now. Uh, so LN, uh, but yeah, that's what it is. So uh, now here we're always, because the, the base is hidden inside LN, it is always beneficial uh, to remember that it's an E. You will never see this. You will never, never, never see this as log base E. You will always see it as LN, but you, you have to remember that the E is inside there because it makes the problems easier if you remember that. Okay, now this one, students are always intimidated by this one, but by the time you get into higher level, level mathematics, every other log has disappeared. They don't deal with log base 10, they don't deal with log base 2, they don't deal with log base 5, they don't deal with anything. It is exclusively log base E. They do LN for every single problem. So it, try not to be intimidated by it, try to just remember it's an E, and E just happens to be a decimal. E is as simple as just 3.14 for pi. It is, it is literally the same thing. It's just a different symbol, a slightly different decimal, it, but it works the same as pi. So as, um, I'm not going to say it's easy as pi because that makes me want to punch myself in the face. Okay, but it, but it works like the same. Okay. All right, so now that we have those figured out, um, we can do a couple examples with those just to make sure that we feel comfortable. So let's do uh, converting LN. Oh gosh, this is gonna be a decimal, so let me, let me figure it out, hold on. Let's convert LN5 equals 1.609. Let's convert that into exponential form. So if you want to leave it like this because you can picture in your head that it has a base of E, that's fine. Or what I like to do is I like to rewrite it first and say, okay, before I convert this, I'm going to rewrite this as log base E of 5 equals 1.609. And then I like to say, okay, now I'm ready to convert it. So how do we convert this into exponential form? I'm going to put a base of E here. Put a base of E here. And then the base of E and the log base E cancel each other out and we have that 5 equals e to the 1.609 
And um, so I told you guys there was two places where there's an E button on your calculator. There's an E that's all by itself. But since E has to do with logarithms, since it's, tip it's the base with LN, uh, the E button on your calculator that people typically use is the blue right above the LN button. You can see the LN button right here underneath log. And the regular E button has a default where they ask you what the exponent is because since it's the opposite of log, it like always has an exponent. They always want to know what it is. So uh, every so often you'll want E to the first power, but usually you'll want it to some other exponent. So if we hit second LN, we can try E to the 1.609. I rounded, so this is going to be very similar to 5, but not quite 5. So 4.999, so, or 998, so... Pretty close to five. Okay, uh, we can try another one. Let's do so. With this one, we're going to convert e to the nine equals eight one zero three point zero eight four we'll convert that into log form. All right, so how do I convert that into a log? So we're gonna log base E or LN, same thing. So log base E, log base E, and the log base E would cancel out with the E. And we get 9 equals log base E of the decimal. But I'm never going to leave the final answer as log base E because nobody does that. So I'm going to write LN 8103.084. And then if I type this in, I hit the LN button, LN 8103.084. It's going to be approximately 9. Oh, yeah, that's very close. Okay, so I'm going to hand out this worksheet. You guys are going to try the first uh, 18 problems, which are just converting back and forth. Um, and then while you guys are doing that, I'll be writing some up here so you guys can see them. Any problem that looks like it should be solved like this, you're not solving it, you're only converting it and then you stop. Only converting and then you stop, okay? Don't solve anything. Make sense? No solving. Okay. So we're going to evaluate. logs uh, so they'll give you when you evaluate logs they'll give you a problem uh, and they'll say, don't use a calculator, but tell me what log base 4 of 64 is. And most of us don't think that way. Most of us, even once we've learned what a logarithm is, thinking in terms of a log, is it what? It is not. Most of us, <laughs> most of us have a hard time thinking in terms of logarithms, um, even once we know what they are. So the easiest way for us to be able to solve this, especially not using a calculator because you cannot use a calculator for these, for most of us to be able to solve these problems, it's going to be easier for you to convert it into an exponential problem and think of it that way um, as opposed to leave it as a log problem. So what I'm going to do is off to the side because I'm not, I can't, write this with an x in it and then say x equals for the real problem because the real problem doesn't have an x in it. But off to the side, I'm going to say, all right, this is log base 4 of 64 equals x. 
and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to convert this into an exponential problem. So if I convert this into an exponential problem, what should I do? So I'm putting a base of 4 in there, right? And the base of 4 and the log base 4 cancel out. So I've got 64 equals 4 to some exponent. And I'm not going to leave you guys hanging. I'm going to give you guys this little sheet. Oh, hold on. Nope, right here. <coughs> okay. Uh, 4 to what power is 64? 4 to the third power is 63. Uh, 64, and so that means that it's going to equal 3. And then over here you'd go, oh, equals 3. So this work over here is not like the answer, we're not proving it, we're not going to say, oh, my conclusion at the end is x equals 3. Uh, you're not going to circle this answer because the original problem did not have an x in it. Does that make sense? So we are not circling x as the final answer. We are just coming over here and saying, oh, it equals 3. Does that make sense? Okay, let's try another one. Uh, log base 2 of 1 16th. So off to the side, I'm going to say log base 2 of 1 16th equals x. And then what am I going to do? Base of 2, base of 2. So 1 16th is 2 to a certain exponent, negative 4. 2 to the negative 4 is what gives us the fraction 1 16th. And so we can say that this equals negative 4. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And once you do more of them, you might have an easier time thinking it through. You might not have to show as much work. You might be able to just like write it with the x over there and think of like, okay, base of 2, base of 2, 2 to the x. You might be able to think of that more clearly. Um, but to start with, it might be good to write it down. Yeah, so if you can start to shorthand it after a while, that's totally fine, of course. Okay, let's try... Um, Ooh, let's try this one. This one takes us back to math two, if your teacher taught it to you. I'm not sure if they did. So log base 36 equals six, or sorry, log base 36 of six equals what? So we're gonna say log base 36 of six equals x. base of 36, base of 36, so 6 equals 36 to what exponent? How do you get from 36 to 6? You divide it by 6, what's another way? You square root it. What exponent is square rooting something? Half. half. It's an exponent of 1 half. Everyone remember that from math 2? Yeah. Cube rooting something is an exponent of 1 third. Fourth rooting something is an, ex an exponent of 1 fourth. Fifth rooting something is an exponent of one fifth. So anytime you want to square root something, and I'll prove it to you, anytime you want to square root something, you raise it to an exponent of one half. So square root of 36 is 6. 36 to the one half is 6. Square root of 49 is 7. 49 to the one half is 7. 64 to the one half. Uh, 81 to the 1 half, 100 to the 1 half. So the exponent 1 half is how you square root something with an exponent, 1 half. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
So this was a math two problem in math four form. Just seeing if you remember that. So x equals one half, which means this log equals one half. Square rooting it. Okay, uh, do those problems make sense? Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do, did we finish the worksheets we were just working on one through 18? Okay, I'm gonna have you guys turn those in. I'm gonna give you credit for those. I'm gonna print, do we think these little sheets would be, should I print those for us? Yeah. Yes, okay. I'm gonna print those for us. I'll print these for us and then I'll print um, a sheet of evaluating and that's all we'll probably do for today. All right, so I will be right back. <laughs> 